Hello and welcome back to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. And on today's Ford Friday, we'll be taking a look at this UK brochure for the Ford Console Classic 1.5 litre. Hello and welcome back and if you're new to Quartzlight, yes we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in cars and car brochures, please consider subscribing. Today is Friday, we call it Ford Friday here on Quartzlight because we look at a, a Ford every Friday. Today we're going all the way back to the 60s for the Ford Console Classic. So the Console Classic really only had a very short production run. Launched in 61, it only went till 63. And I think the reason for that, it was quite a complex and expensive car for Ford to produce. Available as a two door or a four door, a standard trim or deluxe floor or column gear change, single or two tone paint. But the styling was really very much an Americanized styling, really, wasn't it? Straight away, you can see lots of American influence here. Originally came with a 1340cc engine, although by 62 it had got a 1498cc engine, and that's what we're looking at today because this is a brochure from. 1962 September 62 to be precise and yes a UK brochure now what's very common with 60s brochures all the cars in here are actually drawn on really nice pictures actually but they are all drawings very common for the 60s uh, brochures to be like that although of course some are actual cars it's more common to be like this very often in 60s brochures as well, they kind of open up into a poster style. Well, this one doesn't actually do this. It opens up more as a traditional uh, brochure. Now we say this particular brochure is from September 62. Unfortunately, somebody has kind of decided to actually uh, write that on the front for an unknown reason. Um, even worse, it looks like they put some numbers and scrolled it out because they got it wrong first time, which is, very strange thing to do particularly when you think if you turn to the back page anyway it tells you the date there the 9th of September and 62 so unfortunately someone decided to write that on the front but other than that it is actually in very nice con condition considering it is from 62 anyway enough waffle let's open the first page now when we open the first page we've got you know, the console classic one and a half litre from Ford again Bit of a description and another nice drawn image. We'll start with the text though. Very distinctive, sleek and stylish, the remarkable console classic now makes a still quicker pace with the new full one and a half litre five bearing crankshaft engine. Always an outstanding performer thanks to an excellent power to weight ratio. The new one and a half litre classic glides well clear of all competitors within its price bracket a pace maker indeed and then we get this lovely uh, drawn image once again of this two-door version in a sort of like a light yellow color a really stylish looking car and you know little bits of those fins on the back and this one's got white wall tires as well i do believe this brochure is actually only showing two-door versions but i have seen a four-door version of this car as well but like i say the drawings in this are really nice and very 60s aren't they and then the next page is uh, entitled setting the style because really style was what this car was all about again we get another drawn image but we'll start with the text Tell us way out ahead of the field in sheer good looks alone, the console classic one and a half litre. Consider the sweeping uncluttered wing line, the elegant and very practical reverse rake rear window, think Anglia there, the smooth expanse of rear deck covering a, a cavernous boot and of course the twin headlamps for exceptional night vision. And if you're particular about colours, the classic provides a choice of 
10 single tone and 6 two tones. And there is another very nice drawn image of this red example and yes at the back there you can make out that sort of reverse rake uh, rear window like an Anglia again with these nice white wall tyres um, and of course the little bits of the wings on the back there. However the picture itself although extremely well drawn again a little bit creepy I think with these large headed um, masks in this sort of like circus type theme. Then the next uh, page entitled Making the Pace so let's see what it's got to say for itself. With a very smooth 64 bhp from its 5 bearing engine the front disc brakes classic 1.5 litre will take you quietly into the 80s, cruise comfortably for hours on end in the 70s. You get well bred docile in town and city jam streams, immediate acceleration at the touch of a toe and the thrill of using a really good 4 speed all synchro mesh gearbox with floor or column change. And then this nice sort of green example looks like it's got a, a white roof on this particular model and then you can see the styling at the back really nice styling isn't it with all sorts of winks swooping over those rear lights and once again you can see that anglia type um, sweep away opposite rake sort of window though now the anglia they often used to say oh they've got that opposite rake um, you know to keep the window clear etc etc and other bizarre claims but similar to the this classic I think it was more about styling than anything else. And the next page entitled Step Inside has got some really nice images of the interior but let's start with the text. Two or four doors, yeah so Gallup like mentions the four door version but no nice picture unfortunately. An open invitation to an inviting interior. In front a split bench seat with both halves fully adjustable. In the back a generously wide and superbly comfortable full width seat. All round truly spacious room to relax with the emphasis on head, leg and shoulder room. Upholstery is hard wearing, elegant vinyl two tone and hide is optional on deluxe. Again, on the deluxe car, the door release catches are built into the armrests with safety locks at window level, a useful safety feature. It goes on to tell us a handsomely styled fascia with well-designed instrumentation. Safety-minded, the generous padded fascia runs full width. Driver-minded, the cowled instruments lie directly in front of the driver. They include speedometer, odometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, warning lights and variable instrument lighting. An important uh, deluxe features are the full horn ring, parcel shelf, lockable glove box, cigar lighter and screen washer. See the spec page for full details. And on this particular example it looks like a column change version this one and like it said in the uh, text there um, that sort of full ring horn type design on the deluxe I guess this must be the deluxe version and of course lockable glove box would also be a deluxe feature got to point out nice little opening quarter light there and then a look at the seats on this version you can also see that um, on this particular model the rear windows kind of like that sort of like opening a little bit of a catch on there to open it up. Um, something on the back seat there, maybe we should zoom in what we're carrying in our car in the 60s. Driving gloves of course, I mean that's more than expected. I don't know what the other item is, is it some kind of like camera does some description? I'm not entirely sure. I was on to tell us about the boot and the boot are absolutely massive on these cars. Boot size is more than generous with its 21 cubic foot capacity, greater than any other car in its class. The spur wheel is recessed into the rear wing where it is clear of the luggage but easily extracted. The fuel tank is placed below the boot and has a capacity of 9 gallons, sufficient for 300 miles at touring speeds. 
the Deluxe Classic provides a choice of floor or column mounted shift for the 4 speed all synchromesh gearbox. Cost is the same for both. And then we do get an image of the boots. An absolutely huge boot considering the size of the car, I think. Then we get a little nice little drawing of the column or the floor mounted gear change. And the next two pages are all the specifications. On the left hand side there it's all about the engine and then the engine again and more specifications. I used to like going into a lot of technical detail, the 60s brochures and they slowly got less and less. But let's start with the engine on the left hand side and see what it's going to tell us. Nice little image of the engine and gearbox on this image and of course looks like a floor mounted gear change on this example. Anyway, let's look at some of the text. So it tells us a five bearing crankshaft. Secret of the new engine's amazing smoothness is the five bearing crankshaft. Dynamically balanced with integral weights. A four speed gearbox, a brand new gearbox, is mated to the new one and a half litre engine. It has a synchro mesh on all forward gears and is controlled by a short floor mounted lever. A column shift is optional on the deluxe car. Eight port cylinder head. Special features of the cylinder head include separate ports and fully machined combustion chambers. Half year service. The one and a half litre classic will only require major service twice a year on average mileage. The only greasing now required is to the two propeller shaft universal joints every 5,000 miles. Engine oil is changed at the same interval. It is, however, still re recommended that a Ford dealer should check the car regularly. I mean, it doesn't sound anything amazing today, but obviously the older the car, the, car, the more maintenance you needed uh, to keep them on the road. Classic's new one and a half litre engine, and yeah, it mentions this a lot in this brochure, but don't forget the original engine was a 3040, sorry, a 1340 cc unit. Now we've gone up to this larger engine. So it tells us Classic's new one and a half litre engine is a very impressive power unit, developing 64 bhp at 4600 rpm. It produces 85.5 pounds foot of torque at a 25, 20, 2300 rpm. The new five bearing crankshaft gives the new engine the smoothness of a six cylinder unit, but without the complication. A high power output is obtained with a low fuel consumption through careful attention to breathing. Separate inlet and exhaust ports are provided. And then we get to the full specification page proper. We'll go through this. I'll kind of pick some key points off, but I'm not going to read it all. But of course, you can pause the screen at any time if you do want to read it all yourself. So it starts with the engine, goes into even more detail. So if you do want to read it in any more detail, of course, you can pause the screen and then look at this. Uh, moving down, it talks about the engine lubrication, the ignition, which is a 12 volt uh, unit, fuel system and cooling system. Let's go down a little bit further. The transmission, which we've kind of like touched on a little bit, a four speed all synchro mesh unit. Front suspension is independent front wheel suspension. A rear suspension is semi elliptical springs with hydraulic double acting lever type shock absorbers. Brakes, uh, discs at the front, rear drums, and a little bit there about the steering. And at the bottom of this column, it's got a little bit of information about the wheels and tyres and electrical equipment. Um, but let's move on. Instruments. Kind of like talks a bit about that in the brochure anyway, but if you want to read it all, you can do. Controls mounted on the top half of the fascia panel. Controls are as follows. Chalk, windscreen wiper, incorporated windscreen washer on the deluxe. Key operated ignition starter. Uh, combined instrument side headlamp lighting switch, foot operated headlamp dipper switch, fresh air ventilator uh, control and heater controls when fitted.
body all steel uh, safety glass all round and then it starts talking about the two door model two door models opening rear quarter windows um and it looks like the curb weight for the two door model really doesn't go into detail about that four door model anyway in this particular brochure um, but if we move down it tells us the general equipment so variable speed electric windscreen wipers which to me seems very early for variable, variable speed windscreen wipers actually I think you know some things on this car kind of like were I won't say groundbreaking but certainly put on this car that possibly other models didn't have that now we kind of like think of as being very ordinary and you know we expect them but back then maybe it's something a little bit different four sealed beam headlamps twin tail and stop lamps twin reflectors rear number plate illuminated lamp flasher type direction indicators with self cancelling arm on steering column ashtray interior rear view mirror provision for fitting heater and radio and then the extras for the deluxe model bright metal exterior and interior ornamentation fully styled padded door armrests incorporated remote door opening handle deluxe seating with two-tone vinyl luster upholstery two-tone door trim two-tone body paint steering column gear change optional passenger sun visor carpet floor covering rear compartment ashtray windscreen washer cigar lighter twin horns chrome horn ring coat hooks front door op operated courtesy light headlamp flasher switch located on the end of the indicator arm for 62 i think that's not too bad at all actually um but if we go down a little bit further he starts talking about the fitted options which are at extra cost so the standard model you can have a heater and demister as an extra cost item deluxe model you can get hide vinyl upholstery white sidewall tires and a heater and demister now it does strike me as a really nice array of colors that you know kind of missed today really in many ways um, deluxe singles and two-tone schemes available at no extra cost uh, so you have ermine white ascot gray uh, ambassador blue aqua blue lime green windsor gray imperial maroon savoy black panama yellow and goodwood green and then the two uh, color schemes ascot gray upper lower ambassador blue ascot gray upper with windsor gray lower ascot gray upper with imperial maroon lower uh, we have ermine white upper with ascot gray ermine white upper with aqua blue and ermine white upper with a lime green lower and then the back page even has a nice little drawing um, on a damp day of this particular classic um, black by looks of it so that would mean Savoy black wouldn't it and then at the bottom here with compliments so you would have your dealer stamp there normally printed in England by Bemrose and Sons Derby and like we said at the start there is the date right at the bottom there 962 so September 1962 so there we go the ford console classic and in this case the one and a half liter version an interesting car so you can see from this picture how large or long that boot area is compared to the size of the vehicle but like i say it didn't last too long but quite a complex and expensive car to produce but interesting features on it i think obviously the styling is very much um, an americanized styling but i quite like that actually i think it does look nice on this sort of smaller scale car and of course some of those unusual features for the time um, such as those headlamp flashes and of course that variable speed windscreen wipers certainly made it stand out for the time at least 
Do you remember these cars? Did you own one of these cars? I think my dad actually said he owned one of these before I was born, actually. Um, interestingly enough. But thank you so much for watching Quarterlight today. Many more episodes to come in the near future, including tomorrow's episode, which will be Saturday. Saturday special, where we look at a special edition one. It is a very nice special edition that we're looking at tomorrow. But... If you've not done so already, please do like and subscribe so you don't miss any of those episodes. But thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great weekend. See you soon and goodbye.